is a magic number. Three is a magic number. That was the very first Schoolhouse Rock song, and I remember the first time I heard it in my office 30 years ago. It was 1972. I was a young executive with ABC in charge of children's programming when the creators of Schoolhouse Rock came knocking on my door. Their enthusiasm was contagious as they pitched their idea of inserting educational material into catchy sing-along music. I thought this was such a great yet simple concept that I immediately offered them a contract. And the rest, as they say, has been history. History that has been truly music to our ears. Now I want to take you behind the scenes where they're making the latest Schoolhouse Rock song, I'm Gonna Send Your Vote to College, an all new song about the Electoral College. And along the way, we'll hear some wonderful stories from the producers, creators, and performers who have brought Schoolhouse Rock into our homes. And then he's doing, okay. then he's doing the bottom. <laughs> the first part is just a I got it. That's it. And we're going to go to the top. Schoolhouse Rock is back in session. And they're recording a brand new song. Ta -da! Schoolhouse Rock was first broadcast in 1973. For that generation of kids, it answered such questions as how a bill gets through Congress, why Zero is a hero, and why are we all victims of gravity? The show aired continuously until 1985, and then was brought back in the 90s for five more years. In 2001, they're at it again. I'm Gonna Send Your Vote to College is the 48th song produced by the original creators and performers. This is George Newell. He wrote the song, guys. For Sorry, you, guys. You don't know. <laughs> what do you think? I bet we could get a tape. I'm gonna send your vote to college when you vote for a president. The idea of educational songs came from David McCall the owner of an advertising agency where George Newell worked in 1970. He also had uh, six boys, and he took them uh, on vacation to a dude ranch, and he noticed that one of the boys, who was having a great deal of, uh, of trouble in school remembering uh, multiplication tables, knew the lyrics to every current rock song. The whole idea was based on repetition, that the kids, if they could hear a Beatles song or a, a Rolling Stones song for two or three times, that they would immediately, you know, know the lyrics and can play them back to you. So he put two and two together, and he came back to New York, and he said, you know, what if we were to take things like rote learning, like the multiplication tables, and put them to rock music? The original intent was that it would be an educational phonograph record, and there was never any intent for it to be a television product. What? Schoolhouse rock with no pictures? Eek! It almost happened. But in true Hollywood style, an art director named Tom Yoey created what would become an Emmy-winning classic from a simple doodle. The jump was made by, by Tom, who was an incredible artist and cartoonist. And when he heard the song, he thought it was very visual. And literally, while listening to the tape, he was sitting doodling figures and things, and he, doodled, uh, he did a magician, and he did something else, and he said, well, these would make great animation. Now, they needed a TV network. ABC happened to be the advertising agency's biggest advertising account. We did all of their promotion and advertising work. And Rad Stone, who was the account executive on that uh, business, uh, knew that ABC was looking for some short educational material. But there was no idea that somebody would want a three minute and 15 second television program. So he arranged a meeting with uh, a fellow named Michael Eisner, who was the head of children's programming. Michael Eisner, who would eventually run the Disney company, bought the show at the first meeting Hooray! and put it on Saturday mornings. That's how easy it is to get into television. <laughs> when you pull down all my levers for the person of your choice, you're also choosing state electors who will have the final voice. They're called the Electoral College. And Getting into TV may be easy, but try writing a song about the American election system. There's just nothing you can do because every state 
has slightly different ways of selecting. You know, in some states they're elected, in some states they're appointed, in some states the parties do it, in some states it's in the general election. It's impenetrable. But sometimes a few great musicians can help strike just the right chord. Jack Sheldon and Bob DeRoe have been with the Schoolhouse Rock creative team since the beginning. That's like right, that. yeah. <laughs> At the music center, I used to play with a hat. <laughs> How'd you do? I did great. They're bringing out a bigger set of lyrics. Oh, okay, good. To the be the winner in each one, whatever, 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 whatever. Bob doesn't run a tight ship, but it fits. So, so yeah, I wrote three as a magic number, and that started the whole thing. Because yeah. I was commissioned to put the multiplication tables to music, and that was my answer. And you're so good at math. Three <laughs> is magic number. Today, Bob is the musical yes, director, is. and both he and Jack sing it's on the new song. Number. Bob's the only guy I know who played piano with Charlie Parker and well, sang with well, Miles well. Davis. <laughs> there ain't nobody else like that. <laughs> we sort of take our time, we have a good time, and we... Yeah. Well, you are a quality. genius, too. That helps. Is a oh, yeah. well, I don't know about that. I do. Hey, you're kind of cute. One of the great things about making Schoolhouse Rock was they could take their time. The reason for that was that we were an advertising agency. We weren't a television production house, so we didn't have... We didn't have to worry about getting picked up next year or any of that business. We did one, and then we admired it, and then we did another one. And then we sat back and admired it, and then did another one. And literally, Tom drew on his kitchen table at home. After Tom Yoey designed the look of each song, the next step was to give the drawings life. Hearing the music, lining up my animation in a special way to hit in a rhythm, uh, you know, and, and get it all going. Enter the animators. When we started it, as George had said, we, uh, we almost used them as fillers because we were a commercial studio and we're doing commercials. But it, it became a labor of love in such a way that we couldn't even think of the commercials. We just wanted to do Schoolhouse Rock. So every time it got slow, we were happy to pour all our energy into uh, Schoolhouse Rock. And I really felt it on every one of them. And that was because the music was so good. And even if the vote is close, Someone wins by just a little tiny hair. The electors give that person all their votes. And it's considered fair and square. And then we wanted one, two, th and it's considered fair and square. And it's considered fair and square. As much as it was a labor of love for the people working on it, Schoolhouse Rock was a real TV show with sponsors and loyal fans. We had billboards that said, you know, Schoolhouse Rock is brought to you by your friends at Nabisco. And uh, it was actually listed in, uh, in TV Guide. The shows were listed. And I've found out since by doing seminars around the country and things that kids really did look for it in the listings. I'd always thought that... It got popular because at that point ABC was the leading children's network and the kids saw it whether they wanted to or not. But we were doing a seminar up at uh, Harvard and three or four people stood up and said, that's not true. You know, I switched from NBC to see this, this, these little three minute things on ABC. So it's pretty extraordinary. Nowadays, the kids have all grown up, but the show's left a deep impression. On the plane, coming down. Um, I just wanted to review some of the stuff I was bringing down, and I opened up my little bag and pulled out some stuff, and this woman sitting next to me looks over. She said, is that Schoolhouse Rock? And she was like in her late 30s and went bananas on me, and she caught, started telling her husband, hey, this guy does Schoolhouse Rock. Remember Schoolhouse Rock? And she was so excited. It was just unbelievable. There's a touring company. It's a, it goes about 300 times a year in various schools and, and uh, places. Uh, we're, we're, we're very pleased with that. In fact, another play is, is uh, opening uh, uh, shortly. A group from uh, Chicago, Theater BAM, did a, a presentation they called uh, Schoolhouse Rock Live. It's a big uh, thrill to go and sit in the back of the auditorium and hear people singing words you wrote 20 years ago, and then they introduce you, and it's like, you know, I felt like Elton John up there, you know. Mm. <laughs> consulting with the composer here. That was great. Okay. 
Okay, we'll listen and make sure. Print that. One of the reasons for the show's popularity and success is its ability to really educate. They took it out and tested it and then tested the concept. And the, the, the playback was, yes, it really teaches. It's just not another cartoon. And that, that was really the goal and the mission. We were talking to fourth graders, uh, kids who were really, you know, beneath our target audience. And I would say that a third of them knew the songs. But they knew the songs because their teachers had them in the classrooms. The other thing that was really funny is that we were mobbed by the teachers because they had all grown up with it. Along with educators, the television industry also recognized that Schoolhouse Rock was special. And the winner is... <coughs> Grammar Rock! This award in 1973 was the first of four Emmys won by the show. I'd like to thank Mike Eisner and uh, Chuck Jones for buying our little project in the beginning. And since I forgot to call my mom on Mother's Day, hi, Mom. <laughs> In 2001, at the age of 63, Tom Yowie, the original animator for Schoolhouse Rock, passed away. <sighs> well, I'm not supposed to cry on television. It was worth every moment, you know, because I, I knew if he was happy, it was really good. He was much more practical than, than I was, yet he was very, very, that isn't to mean he wasn't creative, because he could outcreate me, you know, nine times out of ten if he really wanted to and I miss them dearly. So what if they don't have a big macho football team? These days, Tom Yoey Jr. keeps the family tradition going. He's been a Schoolhouse Rock animator since 1994. It's such a thrill to, to sort of be carrying on where my dad left off. Because I tend to draw a lot like him, uh, he was my mentor for obvious reasons. Tom Jr. created the character Mr. Morton when Schoolhouse Rock was broadcast in the mid-90s. I had never realized that he drew practically identically to his father. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree sometimes, and uh, I followed in my dad's footsteps pretty closely. Father, son, and lolly selling adverts here. Tom has designed the, uh, the song we did for this DVD uh, about the Electoral College. So it's really great. I'm, I feel like I'm working for a family store. Tell. Okay, so we'll punch in, we'll punch out, we'll punch in again. Okay, ready? Okay, one, becomes two, the, three. Becomes the president. We're getting close. We're going to keep taking him till we like it, huh? President. Becomes the president. Becomes the president. Pretty good. Yeah! Excuse me, I have a chance to meet ladies. <laughs> at our ages, every recording session is like a reunion. You know? Oh, yeah, we do have, <laughs> yeah, at our ages, you're together we have with your reunions. class members from Conjunction Junction. Right, sure. Like I always say to Jack, I have to hire you to see you. I hire, <laughs> uh, you know, when I book a session, I say, oh, I'll book him. I haven't seen him in 10 years. Everyone who graduates becomes the president. We're going to hear the whole chop. Well, let, me get, let me do that. You can do that better? Yeah. I did something in my life that I could say I, I'm so proud of and I'm so happy that I did it because, again, I, I just look around me and uh, so many people got so much out of it. The feeling that you've done something that really helps people uh, learn something that they couldn't learn in a, in, a, in a different way. So here we did something just for the love of doing it. And I think that all of us had a little teacher in us. I mean, I've always thought that teaching was a great thing. I feel a little like Perry Como right now, so I might sing, it's incredible. <laughs> Cause everyone who graduates. Yes, everyone who graduates. Everyone who graduates becomes a Ta-da! It ain't the high lows, is it? <laughs> <laughs>